Okay, um, we're going to talk about programming the inverter. So this is the home screen. Um, it's a, I'll show you a little bit more about it, but basically we have these dials here, which give a very nice clear indication what's going on. So this is your solar input or your wind turbine power. This is your AC load. This is your battery power and this is your grid power. Now this is running a fairly low power at the moment. Um, so you can see very clearly what's going on here. And these are real time. So these indicate real time exactly what's going on. So it's very easy. This bar chart here gives you the cumulative day power. So basically the power in, the power out. So important, especially if you're running off grid or islanding mode, you want to know what's been generated in, what's gone out, and every day clearly you want more in than out because if you have more out than in, your battery is going to go flat. Here is your state of charge of your battery or it will appear as voltage. Here is your cumulative solar jet power. Here is your generator, if you're using a generator, the generator on time because we can't actually monitor the generator current. So we talk about the, the on time. And then this part here is if you're exporting or importing. So if you're buying from the grid or you're selling from the grid, you can see that. So this home screen gives you a complete view. It's a very, very simple thing to see. Okay, let's start looking about programming. If we click on here, this button here, we go to the programming screen. So here we see the basic setup, the battery setup, the grid setup, the system mode, advanced auxiliary fault codes, lithium battery. Now, as mentioned before, if you're connected to a lithium battery, so a simple thing is, is an early test because you need to make sure your communications. If you click on the lithium battery, you will see this screen and this will show that you're communicating fine. So you can see here the battery and your communication. So this information is being provided from the battery. So this may vary depending on the type of battery and the battery array. Each time you press escape, it takes you to the screen for fruit. Let's start off basic programming. So here, of course, we can put the time and the date and we can synchronize it from the AC. It's a very simple thing. Next point here is display. So here we can actually add our company name. So I will call, I don't know, we can call it uh, test. And by moving these up, T, and by moving these up, up and down, we can, we can actually put in. And this is a really nice feature because many, you may want to put your company information on here. Uh, without boring you, so uh, you might want to put your company name, or I've, I've called it test, don't forget to press OK. Go back onto basic setting here for change, make change. You've also got a couple of other things, you can switch the bleep off and on, this is annoying beep 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 if there's a fault condition, you can switch it off if you want to. You can have the LCD for auto dim the backlight. Nice feature on our system here, you've got a language choice. The unit can run in English, the operating system can be in Spanish or French, and we will add other languages later on. So you've got your language choice. Top corner here, you've got help. The help basically is in English, and it actually shows you what each screen can do. So it's a very simple, very simple button. It just basically gives you, um, if you want to refer to the manual a little bit on shore, you can press the help. So this is basically here. Here is a reset. I wouldn't generally touch the reset unless you've got a real problem. So generally leave that, leave that alone. So that's your basic setup. So your basic setup is your time and your display, what you wanted to see on your display, which is here, so which is your name. So it's good. So if now I've changed it to test and you see it will centralize the word. So I've called it test and the title on it is come test. Let's continue with the programming. Here is your battery. You should have done the battery earlier on anyway, so there'd be very little to do. And if you're setting up your lithium and your lithium protocol, so depending on the type of battery you're using, and you put your capacity, your maximum charge current you want the battery, that's relating to the C rating, and it's also relating to the cable rating. So your maximum charge, don't overcharge it if your C rating in the battery, or your cable is a problem, so take care of cable. Uh, here is your battery charge menu. So this basically says if you want to charge the battery from the grid 
or if you want to charge it from a generator. The generator is your auxiliary input, so you've got the two choices here from this menu. This is showing the charge current, so you might want to charge, if you're charging from a generator, you might want it to be less. One of the things about using from a generator is it does a step charge, so it doesn't suddenly boost the charge, because if you've got a generator running and suddenly you hit a massive charge, then it will slow the generator down, it will take the frequency out and everything, it will cause so many problems, so it tends to up the charge slowly. And I'll explain the use of generators in another manual. And here is your, your shutdown voltages. So it will shut down at say um, 20%, low batteries 40% and restart 41. Shutdown does not necessarily mean complete shutdown. Shutdown means shutdown of the AC it will no longer supply power once it hits that point, but the inverter will continue to run and it's ready to accept power again. So the MPPTs and everything are starting to run. So I'll go back onto battery charge here. Uh, and which is the battery, which is going to, sorry, battery type. Uh, one of the buttons here says active battery. What that means is if the unit has gone below the, the, the voltage, which is about 30 something volts, which is the total shutdown, and the unit is completely shut down, so it's gone into deep, deep, deep discharge. Um, now, in most inverters, that's it, you have to then kickstart the battery somehow. Our unit has a trickle charge, so when the solar comes and the sun comes or whatever, it will trickle, or there's power available, it will trickle charge the battery very, very slowly until the battery comes up to a safe voltage where you can start charging it again. So it is a protection device, but it allows a very trickle charge and it will help recover the battery. It's very, very important. Um, another point here, so I'm jumping a little bit, is on battery. If you're using, uh, on here, if you're not using, um, um, a, a, a lithium battery, these are very important, which is your float, your absorption, equalization voltages. Equalization, I wouldn't, is a special function used for AGM batteries, which puts a slight over voltage every so often. If you use it too often, it will damage the batteries. Do not do it on lithium batteries because it will damage the lithium battery. So normally as default is put at zero, zero, 90 days, zero, zero. So don't run it. Um, on lithium batteries for goodness sake because you cause a lot of problems and don't run it too often. Um, so battery type here, as I say, you've got your communication, your protocol, and I'll talk a little bit more about using batteries in a further video. So let me hit OK and escape and I'll come back onto the main menu.